Welcome to Spitfire, the show that puts your favorite players and now Brawlhalla personalities in the hot seat. I'm your host, Sparky878, and joining me today is one of the most prolific artists in the entire Brawlhalla scene, Karen Calamari Pop. Yay. Did I say your last name right? That's actually closer than any person has ever gotten it that isn't Chinese. That's awesome. So what what is it? Is it Yi? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Karen, yeah, excuse me. Now, for those who don't know, you were the artist behind the splash screens of almost every major Brawl League, Bagel, and Brawlhalla major online championship. You have such a huge background in this scene with all of the art and not necessarily the, the playing side of things. So we're gonna take our first wing. It's the classic from Hot Ones. It's pretty mild. I'm not much to say about it. It's honestly very plain. It's pretty weak as far as things go. It's a standard buffalo sauce. That's all it's meant to be. Now, when you're designing art for a major online Brawlhalla tournament, what's that process like? Like from start to finish, is it, do they, do they just give you carte blanche authority or do they give you an outline or how does that work? Okay, so the only guideline I'm given is that there has to be action in it. So, Ever since about maybe summer, like 2018, I believe, which was the ember in the pool. Ever since then, it's always been action-y, 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 fight scene, fight scene. Um, for the most part, they give me free reign on like what characters to pick and like how to build up the process. I start with the sketch, I run it by they, be sorry, and basically I'm just given free reign. Sometimes like V gives me like a little bit more input on like what to edit post production, I guess. But for the most part, my pieces have been unaltered, I guess. Has the process changed at all from when you did it like way in the beginning, other than adding action to it? Has the process changed at all from when you did it in like 2017 with online Brawl League tournaments to now major seasonal championships? Or is it is it kind of the same? It's pretty much been the same. My process has always been just like sketch and then line art coloring, shading, background. I've gotten a lot better, but I think that's pretty much the only thing that's changed. Was, I can't remember what event it was for, but it was the one that had like player names above it and it had a Tori in it. Was that the first one that had motion in it? I, that's the first one I remember having um, that real was the, the first one was actually Autumn 2018, I believe. Like, yeah, World, not World Gym. But player names came during BCX 2018. Okay. But the first one that was moving, Sloshula actually animated it. I had to like draw out all the layers and stuff like that that helped him animate it. It was just some minor stuff, but the real big stuff, the real cool stuff, that came BCX 2018. That was when we really kind of leveled up overall as a scene in like every facet from production to play, everything. Now we're gonna move on to the next sauce. This is Green Market Hot Sauces. mild. Aftertaste is a little stronger, I guess. You can feel the spice kicking in, but it's not like too strong. Now, these early ones are pretty mild. How are you with hot food? I'm Chinese. Yeah, well, so. that, that, that was exactly what you said when I asked you in the beginning. You said you're Chinese. Does your family cook with a lot of spice? Do you oh, cook yeah. with a my, lot of spice? My mom hates spice, but my dad loves it. He like dumps spice everything. He's actually from a region in China, which is like pretty known for its spicy dishes. Not Sichuan, but like south i guess so how does that cooking work then when you're cooking the same dish do you cook a separate or is one cooked separate for your mom and one for separate for your dad or is the spice added in later unfortunately she just has to suffer with it my dad okay. cooks like some unspicy stuff too but it's, it's rather plain the unspicy stuff i like his spicy stuff a lot more now you have an interesting place in Brawlhalla Esports. Pretty much every other notable figure is directly involved with the competitive side of things. Even people like Foda, obviously, directly involved with the competitive side of things. Commentary, production, all of that is about the tournament itself. But here at BCX, you're the only one who in the Brawlhalla area gets to set up your, your, your art station, take commissions, sell your art here rather than being in like the artist alley. How has that changed from BCX1 to now BCX4? 
So BCX 2016, I actually wasn't like officially there, like as in like an artist with, I didn't like coordinate with BMG or anything. I kind of just like sat in the tables, tried to like get a feeling for like the community since I was so new to it. Since I joined the game, I started playing around September 2016. So that was really new for me. But after that, I was invited to set up a table at 2017 and I had like a lot of prints. BMG support has been so amazing in those. And like 2018, I also got to set up the same things. And then this year I have actually gotten more stuff by myself, like the keychains. Uh, I think I posted pictures on Twitter. Yeah, you definitely did. And you know, I'm looking forward to bring more stuff like that. Maybe next year, we'll see. Do you get people that walk up to you and like see your prints and make the connection like all of a sudden right there like, oh, I remember that from Autumn Championship 2017. You made that. I never knew that you made that. Do you get that at all? I get that sometimes. It was more in like the earlier BCXs, but nowadays I think some people just recognize me already. Like most of the pros I think just know me already. I've been around for a while and talked to them. And I know I get it all the time because I'm on camera a lot as a commentator. Do you get people thinking you're a dev and asking you for CCs or after a dev stream being like, hey, I want a CC code and I never got it. Can you give it to me? Do you get that at all? Um, It's more due to the fact that I'm an admin in the Brawlhalla official oh. Discord mm -hmm. that people actually message me for CCs, codes, tech support and all that stuff. As an artist, I don't generally get that kind of <laughs> stuff, I would think. I think it's mostly due to like being an administrator. All right, we're gonna move on to the next one. Chiba Gold, number three. Oh, this one is interesting. And not spicy at all. This one will sneak up just a little bit on the back end. It's still number three, so it's not killer, but it will sneak up on the back end just a little bit. Now, your Parkview Pantera High School newspaper article from 2016 oh is God. like a Brawlhalla time capsule. You have names in it like Kyler Alice, you have Egg Soup mentioned as like front runners for the world championship, and you even mentioned people who a lot of people don't know about anymore is someone like Techie in there. Now, if you were going to write an article for that newspaper about this BCX, what kind of names would you be mentioning? What would that article say? What would it do to chronicle? The, the change that Brawlhalla has had over the years. Oh my God, there's been so much change that Brawlhalla has been through, like throughout the years. It was like wild to me back in 2016. It's gotten so much like more support, I guess. It's been built up so much. And I would honestly talk about Sandstorm, you know, Boomy. I think I would talk about Wrenched. And on the EU side, I would talk about Blue. Pavelski was like that winner in what was that? The Great Brawl? The Great Brawl. Yeah. And it's honestly changed so much. I've seen so many people come and go, but the fact that like the prize pools increased and like it's just leveled up so much. I just it's so surprising to me. Now, it's did you be hard to pack that all into an article? Did you ever go back and print a correction on your article because you listed LDZ as Jack Janbay instead of Zach Janbay? Okay. Um, unfortunately, we only get one run of the newspaper, so we can't. We don't have a chance to get reprints. I didn't actually know LDZ then. I saw him once, other than like on main stage. He was eating chicken wings. I thought he was eating pasta, but he was eating like chicken wings or something. Those two foods are very different. It looked red. <laughs> it was red. So I just drew the dots in my head, and I, and I drew a picture of that actually. So then, how did you get to Jack? Esports earnings? It, it said Jack, I think. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. I know it doesn't say that anymore. It definitely says Zach Janbay right now. Okay, look, I, I did my <laughs> research and I tried. I really tried. It's okay. It was your first foray as a young writer into making a mistake and learning how to deal with that mistake. And I think that's that's important as in your growth as a writer. Thanks, Farky. <laughs> Everybody makes mistakes. I guess. All right, we're going to move on to the next one. This is Adobo Loco Hawaiian Himajango. Himajango. This one's okay. I like the little chicken it has on it, just like with two heads. Or is that two chickens? I can't tell. I don't actually know. That's a two-headed chicken. 
because it's born in Maui, and then the other chicken says it's enjoyed everywhere. I'm actually getting like an aftertaste yeah. burn finally. It's finally creeping up. Now one thing that I won't know is if you start to sweat because you have bangs. And I learned that you've always had bangs as a kid. Yep. But we did a deep dive on your social media in this segment that we like to call social studies. Now you tweeted, I've been playing Neopets for over nine years now. I think this was in like 2017. It's now increased to like 10 or 11 years. I still check on my pets daily. Ah ha 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 ha. <laughs> what does someone, what do you do in Neopets now? Other than play, like, does, is it any okay. different? So the serious Neopets scene, I'm actually in the Neopets Discord. I can't believe you said that without laughing. The serious Neopets scene. Okay, well, most of the time, in the past years, the past decades, I've been trading my pets, trying to get like the best pets possible. And they are like pretty rare, pretty elite Neopets. And I spent like a decade doing that, just like trading up slowly. I started with like the most basic bottom of the barrel stuff and I got to the top. I do respect the hustle. Cause you always hear like jokes about people like, oh no, I haven't fed my Neopets in 18 years and they're yeah, all dead and now. I, I always hear that and I'm like, no one here ever plays Neopets. I don't think I've ever met a person that plays Neopets without saying like, I haven't fed my Neopets yep. in 10 years. I respect the hustle. I respect it. Now we have a picture. Oh no. Right here. <laughs> oh no. That's me. That's, that's me. That's you. That is when I was in fourth grade and I won my, I think it was the first, first place statewide competition. Now, do you remember how old you were? Actually, it was na nationwide, I think. I was, I think I was about nine or 10. According to our research team, you were 10 years old. Do you remember what it was called? It's a beautiful title. I don't remember. It's called Wildlife Forever, which is fantastic. And it was actually like, it's, it's, everyone at home will see. It was amazing. Like when, when our research team showed me that picture, I looked at it, it was like, holy Research crap. team. Research team. I looked at that picture and obviously it was baby calamari. And then the immediate reaction was, oh my gosh, she is incredibly talented, even at that young age. Like we see your talent now, but to be 10 years old and putting out content like that, like that, <laughs> that is amazing. Now you also tweeted my first anime style drawing was an angel girl in a crop top with white gloves. I remember drawing that picture. When you drew that, did you go crazy with like manga art style stuff? Did you start buying all the books teaching you how to do it? Cause I know that a lot of people I knew would like just hit that phase and bam, everything they were drawing was that. Um, after I drew that picture, I did try to like replicate anime style for basically here I am. Um, <laughs> I didn't buy, I didn't go out and buy books. I kind of just like did digital art completely on my own, just learning as I go. Now we always ask people where their names came from, but you have a history of names. Oh, from no. oldest to newest, you've gone by J Claw, J, Ice Star, Ice, 38th Parallel, and Kraken. Okay, so the earlier ones, those are all from Neopets, and okay. I role-played Warrior Cats, you know, the series. No, I don't. You, you don't? Okay. It's a, it's a novel series about cats that fight in clans. Okay. I, I love cats, so I'm in. Like, it was, it's action-packed. I was he hella into it. Okay. And that's where it came from, basically. Where did, where did 38th Parallel come from? Because one, you're Chinese. Now, for the people who might not know that reference, 38th parallel is the latitude that separates North Korea and South Korea. Why would you have that as your name? I honestly picked up a book about Mao Zedong from the library. I opened the book and I saw a map. And at this time, I was into Hitalia, which is a book, no, not a book, an anime about personified countries. And I was like, I want to make an original character. And there's like, most countries are already made from that series. So I just decided to choose Something that sounded really cool from a map in a book about Mao Zedong, and it said 38th parallel. 
honestly, all of those names, like they sound like rap names. And 38th Parallel is probably the dopest rap name I've ever heard. That would be such a sick rap name. But now your name's Calamari Pop. Calamari Pop. I honestly wanted to connect my sort of squid theme with Kraken into my name. But I also was like, what if I made a fashion label? What would I call it? Calamari Pop. Calamari Pop. Now, in the Brahala community, we've got a pretty mixed bag of parents who are very supportive of pro, of pro players, and then others who think playing video games is a quote, waste of time. Now you focus more on the art side of the Brahala community, but would you say your parents are supportive of you as an artist for video games? Or do they line up with the kind of tough Asian parent stereotype? It's more along the lines of like a tough Asian parent sort of thing. They recognize that it's my hobby, so to speak. And like, if I earn money from it, even better. But they remind me constantly that, remember Karen, it's just a hobby. You have to be a doctor. You have to, it's just for fun. You know, you can't be serious with it. Now, are there any moments that really stand out to you when your parents did something that defined that stereotype? Like, do you have any good Asian parent stories? Um, my mom likes to flex my art to like her friends, her like in like her okay. WeChats, I guess, with okay. like other Asian Wait, in her moms. What? In her WeChat, it's like a another kind of like Discord, but for Asian moms, I guess. Okay, is it like specifically for Asian moms? No, it's just like okay. Chinese. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I think it's like international too, but like I know most Chinese people use okay. it. Um, yeah, she just likes to post my art. She's like proud of me and proud of my progress, but she knows she doesn't want me having it as like a serious career. Now you also said at one point that you never learned how to ride a bike because your mom didn't want you to get hurt. Did you ever learn how to ride a bike? I did not. I still you don't. Didn't. I can't ride a bike. I, I know like, I think Cake made fun of me for it. Um, I know someone made fun of me for it. I was hoping that Atlanta would be a city that like has one of those programs where they have like bikes that you can rent. Like they have the bird scooters everywhere, but I was hoping that they would have those bikes so that we could teach you how to ride a bike. But then I thought, oh no, if she actually does get hurt, I'm not gonna have her blood on my hands. Do I you mean, ever wanna ride a bike one day? I wanna try to ride a bike, but I don't know. Sounds scary. <laughs> I think you should try it. I think learning it as an adult is probably easier than learning it as a kid. I, had, I used to have a bike, but training wheels never came off and then the tire went flat, so I never used, just never used it ever again. All right, we're gonna move on to Los Calientes, the sauce of summer, which we need a little bit of summer right now because it's very cold outside. It's so cold. I love the gradient on the bottle. I'm like a big fan of gradients. It gives you that colors of a sunset. Yeah, the, the blue, blue to the, the yellow. yellow, yeah. It is really pretty. It's a very calming hot sauce, which is kind of an oxymoron, because hot sauces aren't really supposed to I'm be I'm not feeling relaxed. any sting or anything like that. No afterburn. You will eventually, but for the seasoned spicy food people that have been on this, usually after this is where you kind of start feeling a little bit of a kick. Okay. Now in social studies, we saw the piece from the art competition entitled Wildlife Forever. That picture was taken by, and I'm probably gonna butcher this name. Can you just say the name? Shujin Munz. Glad I didn't go for that. Who, as I understand, you studied on. Yes, I used to like paint at her, like, uh, she used to teach me how to paint and all that stuff. I used to do studies of like, just a lot of like animal life, nature, squirrels. I drew squirrels. I drew fish. I, I drew a lot of fish. I mean, we saw your amazing fish, so I'm sure you had a lot of practice with fish. Now, can you tell us how you started learning art? Um, honestly, it started because I quit piano because I was, you know, most Asian parents, I guess, yep. forced their kids to learn an instrument or something. Piano is the typical pick and I was done with piano. I was tired of it. I would not play. So my mom was like, why don't you try to draw instead? And then she found this teacher and then she taught me how to paint. I haven't painted in a while because I left the studio around uh, maybe my sophomore year in high school because I was feeling the pressure of like time and just I can't do it anymore. But I still obviously draw digitally. 
I don't paint traditionally anymore, which is a shame because I do enjoy like, I still have my set of paints, but I've gifted them to my brother who paints now. Now, how is the transition from the more traditional art teachings to what you do now with the digital art and sometimes a lot of times the anime art style that you do now? Is it fair to say it's anime style or? It's fair to say that because it's definitely anime inspired with the big eyes and everything. It's definite. Most traditional artists find it hard to transition to digital, but I've always been pretty much drawing digitally. I have some of my earliest pieces, like I've drawn in like MS Paint. It's, my dad has them on like a flash drive and they're like spray paint awful looking things. And I just like go back and look at them sometimes. I have like an old DeviantArt account with warrior cats on them. I show it off sometimes to my old friend, like my friends and it's just terrible. But like looking at, looking back, it's like, I can see how like some traditional like lessons kicked in. But for the most part, I've been doing digital all basically by myself. My teacher never taught me like any digital techniques. I just kind of learned to transition on my own. Now we're gonna move on to Adobo Loco, Chloe Kid. Am I supposed to feel something from this? <laughs> I can feel a little bit of sting, but it's it's weak. Now I hear that you've been working on a project for a class studying social circles within the context of Brahala. Could you tell us a little bit about that? So I've been like, I guess at a point of privilege where I can like interact with the pros. They've invited me into their social circle, I guess. And it's like interesting to see how they basically separate themselves out. Like I know like PS4 players separate themselves out, how EU and NA kind of has like a big separation there. But like within the group that I'm like in, I can see where people just kind of blocked off certain people that they talk with and just like how they interact with each other, how they socialize and all that stuff. I find it really interesting. I'm just studying that for my ethnography project, essentially. Are there specific people or groups who have surprised you? Um, I gotta say that not really. I, it's most of the work I've been doing is just like trying to figure out like how to analyze these things that I'm just used to seeing, just like trying to quantify them into like, I guess, concepts that can just like be applied, just like how they socialize is by playing video games, but what video games? And then they separate themselves out, how people interact just like by the games they play, apart from Brawlhalla. I mean, they all play Brawlhalla, but some play League of Legends, some don't play League of Legends, and then there's a, a big divide there. That is really cool though, that you, that you do have that first person direct insight deep into this world, especially for someone who I don't want to be mean, but... Isn't relevant? <laughs> no, you're definitely relevant. You're not the best player. Shh. <laughs> we don't talk, okay. All right, look. You regularly talk about yourself being gold. I don't play right. Exactly, it's fine. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I think you're probably one of the, the very few that can look at it from the outside and from the inside. I think you have a unique insight on that. Now we're gonna move on. The zombie one. Zombie apocalypse. Now this one, if you're worried about a bunch of uh, nasty chemicals in it, or maybe I think this one's also gluten-free, you, you don't gotta worry, this is all natural. Well, I'm actually in a class for like fast food, slow food, which is basically talking about organic and all that stuff, but I'm not really too much of a stickler, so. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not either. There's a little bit of kick, but it's always like that initial bite. I don't really feel anything. Now, what do you think about the colors of the sauces? Because we kind of have we kind of have a little bit of a rainbow here. You have your kind of brighter reds. You have like one of two green sauces. Chip Gold's a little bit more yellow. This one's bright, bright orange. The bomb is just a gross dark red. Mm, I gotta say the green does not appeal to me very much. Really? Yeah, it just doesn't look spicy, I guess. I can feel a little bit of kick, but it's not like intensely painful. 
Now, in your staff profile for the Parkview Pan Pantera, you wrote, oh competition God. is the life and blood of her motivation. Winning is what matters most. I wrote that, okay, look, I wrote that because our teacher was like, write something interesting about yourself. And I was like, I'm not interesting. So I just made something up. Shh. Now that, no, that is interesting because like everyone else is like, ooh, I like binge watching Netflix. I like to sleep a lot. We saw how that motivated you in high school with all of your art competitions, the Technology Student Association, editor-in-chief of your newspaper, National Merit semifinalist. But how does that motivate you now as a college student, sophomore at Emory University? Does it, or have you woke back a little bit? Honestly, being at Emory made me realize that, oh gosh, I can feel some spice now. Same. Um, I realized that I'm not that special. I mean, like, if you take the top of, like, some high schools and you all group them together, some are going to be less better than the others, I guess. And I've realized that whereas in the past I would cry about a 93, now I'm just like, oh, I got a, <laughs> I got a fucking 75. Okay. I'm, I'm cheering for that. So you have, you've mellowed out a little bit as, as you've grown and matured. My parents haven't, but you know, that's, that's the Asian experience. Now we're going to move on to the bomb, notoriously the worst wing. It's okay. Like, I can feel the sting. It's mostly the sting that bothers me. Now, you also wrote in that About Me blurb, unfortunately, her best isn't always good enough. But that's another story. That's a very dark, open, and honest sentence to write about. And basically, you're About Me blurb that's going to go in a public school forum. I thought it's funny. I thought it was funny. Is there is there a story with that? Not really. It's just like, sometimes your best really isn't enough, and you just gotta accept that. This one's hitting me in the back of my throat a little bit. Now we're gonna hit wing number nine. Are you doing okay? Need a minute? Ow. It's, it's, a, little, it's, it's a little spicy? Maybe you spoke a little bit too soon? Just a little bit. I'm Chinese, not spicy at all. Am I supposed to feel something from this? Maybe, maybe, we can go on maybe. I don't really feel anything. I agreed to be tortured. You did. Now in the world of online artists, art thieves are notorious for stealing and reposting artwork. I'm sure you've had your fair share of dealings with art thieves. Is there an example that comes to your mind where someone was so adamant and flagrant in insisting that it was their art and not yours when it was so clear that it was yours? Well, not really, but I do remember a situation where someone came into a, the Brawlhalla Discord, said that, posted my art, said it was theirs, and then, and then when someone confronted them, they were like, oh yeah, it's not that good, sorry. Want some more milk? And that was like, wow, you take my art, and then you flame it in my own Discord. <laughs> Now, what was your reaction the first time that your art was stolen? Did you like wear it like a badge of honor? Like, holy cow, my art is good enough to steal. People say that if they're not an artist, honestly, or like they're just starting out, but honestly, it's so annoying. Especially if people use it to like profit, it's annoying. Honestly, I feel like some sort of tears welling up in my eyes. <laughs> Barking. One more wing. We just gotta do one more. One more and then you're done. Oh 
What's that for? This one's called the last dab. And the reason it's called the last dab is because you put a little bit extra on the last wing. Now, of course, we have updated the sauce list to use the Last Dab Triple X, the most recent iteration of the Last Dab from Hot Ones. My eyes are burning. <laughs> I haven't even had this yet. Oh my God. You don't have to put any extra on. Yeah, I'm gonna like abstain. That's fine. Okay. Ready? No. <laughs> Cheers. All right, we're gonna put you on the spot. Here's a pad. Here's a pen or pencil, your tool of choice. Now there was a trend on Twitter where people were anthropomorphizing things. <clears throat> manga art style. Yep. They were also giving them personality traits based on the thing. You made Rahala Chan, who is picked on a lot, looks aggressive but is really shy, and her hair color changes based on her mood and damage. She's wearing a BMG hoodie and a Brahala t-shirt. You also made Brawly Chan, Rank S Chan, and Ikea Chan, among others. If you made a Spitfire Chan right now, I'm gonna put you on the spot. What would she look like and what would her traits be? Hmm, you gotta think about it. It's honestly gonna be pretty bad because I'm just sketching. That's but... fine. It doesn't have to be a work of art. Hopefully so. This is honestly the most I can do. I'm just like... <laughs> I am out of it. Show it I to am, the camera. Show it to the Wait, wait, wait. What are her personality traits? Alright, spicy. Sarcastic. It seems too like stereotypical to just write like fire, yeah. being fiery, and all that stuff. So, I'm... give me one deep insight into Spitfire Chain. She volunteers on weekends at soup kitchens. Okay, <laughs> okay, there we have it. Calamari pop, you did it. You made it all the way through. You gave us Spitfire Chan, something that I'm so glad that we have now. Show that to the camera. I have to. I'm not proud of it. You know, you should be proud of that. You drew under more duress than probably most artists will ever face out there. Made it through the end. You're the queen of spicy court. Thank you for joining me here on Spitfire. Thank you for joining us on the last episode of the year. Thank you everybody who watched. Thank you to the research team helping me find the deep dives on everyone, that deep info. Thank you so much to Bagel Productions for running everything behind the scenes, making it so you can look at this rather than just hear about it later. My name is Sparky878. We put all your favorites in the hot seat. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. Nice. Whoo! Ah. Good job, boys. <clears throat> Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for doing it. I'm dying. <laughs>